Hi, my name is David Maynard. I'm a member of the research team here at SecureWorks, and on behalf of myself and my co-presenter, Johnny Cash, uh, I'd like to uh, take a, a minute and show you a demo of something that we wish we could be doing live in Vegas, but due to security reasons, we can't really. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using this machine as an attacker, and I'm going to be bringing in another machine that we will be using as the victim. And... Um, don't think, however, just because we're, we're attacking an apple, the flaw itself is in an apple. We're actually using a third-party uh, wireless card. So normally for this attack to work, uh, you do not have to have the victim associated to an access point or authenticated in any way. But for the ease of this demo, this machine, will, uh, this Dell will be acting as a uh, wireless access point with the address of 192.168.1.1. And this machine will have an uh, address of 192.168.1.50. Uh, the attack will be launched from here. It will, affect, it will um, manipulate buggy code and device driver on this Apple. And this Apple will connect back to the, uh, to the, uh, to the attacker uh, with the shell, at which time I'll have complete interactive access. So there's a couple steps required in setting this up. The first point part is turning this laptop into an access point. I do that with a script I wrote called setup.sh. Uh, this will actually create a, um, an access point called SW Apple Demo. And we'll make this a, a wireless access point, and then we will connect the Apple to it. So let's run that script. And we connect to SW Apple Demo. Uh, we have an IP address of 192.168.1.50. Um, now what we do is we run the exploit. It's called bad seed. Um, this is actually what it looks like. This is the help screen for it. Um, and now we will run it against uh, the target machine. It takes a minute or two to run. It's preparing the shell code for return. It's getting the uh, connection information for this laptop. It's now sending the attack. It's waiting for a response. It got a shell. Now, I am interactively logged into this machine. Let's minimize this window so you can see what I'm doing. I'm looking at the uh, files in that home directory. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is create a file on the desktop code owned, owned.txt. As you can see, it was created right there. And now I'm going to delete it. For further proof, we can open a shell, a new shell, and we can onto the desktop. We can create a file called password. And in the file I'm putting this is a secret password, exclamation point. I like to use exclamation points as it's actually a secret. There it is created on the desktop. So coming back over here, there it is. Cat password. This is a secret password. And now we will delete it and it's gone. This concludes our presentation, but if you're still not convinced, there are no wires attaching the two devices. I just create a file on the desktop called iwalkedaround.txt. And I just deleted it. The thing to keep in mind here is although we, we attacked an Apple, the flaw is not specifically in the Apple operating system as we use third-party hardware. This type of a flaw will be systemic across all operating systems and hardware, and the only way to prevent it is proper testing. Although this flaw is and can lead to a remotely exploitable condition, it's not as trivial as a generic buffer overflow. On behalf of Johnny Cash, myself, David Maynard, and the Skill Rich Research Team, thank you for watching.